124,000 people are now infected. It's understood around 68,000 people globally have recovered. Well, Italy is one of the worst affected countries, with more than 12,000 confirmed cases and a death toll of more than 800. We have spoken to Dr. Stefano Maiane, who is busy working on the front line in a hospital in Lombardy. The situation is getting worse uh, day by day because we are reaching the top of our capability in uh, ICU beds uh, as well as the wards to treat uh, coronavirus positive patients. Um, in our province, uh, we had uh, completely run out of uh, resources, both human and technological resources. So we are waiting for new ventilators. A new device for non-invasive ventilation. Well, in a moment we're going to speak to the virologist, Dr. Natalie McDermott, but first we are joined by Dr. Alex George, an accident and emergency doctor at Lewisham Hospital, who joins us live this morning from Dublin. Morning to you, Alex. I know that you've been working in a really busy A&E for the last week or so. Just tell us what that's been like. Good morning. Um, so Danny is as busy as it usually is in uh, central London. Uh, what we are seeing more now is cases of patients coming back from abroad who maybe are concerned that they might be in contact with, with the coronavirus or might have symptoms of that. Um, we're seeing an increased number of calls to one-on-one -on -one service and therefore an increased number of patients that are being sent to isolation pods at the hospital or that we're directly having to call at home to advise and make decisions about what we do next, really. How well prepared do you feel and do you feel the accident and emergency departments are? So we have a clear protocol about what we're going to do with the you know, patients that are concerned about that might have coronavirus, whether that may be um, sending community teams uh, to their home or whether um, dealing with them in the pods and taking the swabs and sending them back to isolation in their own home or indeed in a small number of cases where we need to admit the patient in the hospital and um, we would put the patient into an isolation room. The difficulty comes where um, we have an increased number of cases and you know, can we cope with the volume of the patients that might potentially be coming into the department? That's the real problem, is that we have, if we have loads of those patients coming, you know, that's going to put pressure on an already busy A&E service. Alex, I know you're really active on social media. We're seeing lots of stuff coming out of Italy at the moment. Doctors there posting about the desperately difficult conditions that they are in. Do you foresee a time in weeks to come where you might be working in that sort of situation as your as well? DNA gun? I think a lot of people predict <coughs> that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, what I am very Everybody who gets tested like that, you're be, giving your DNA um, for free. That people need to be alert and not anxious. It's about taking steps that we can do to... We've you usually know, got to commit a crime for that, but now they're taking it for free. The main thing that we can do to protect ourselves. Uh, we now know and everyone's freely the opening phase, their mouth. Um, yep, you can have my DNA. Having reduced amounts of like social contact, I guess, you know, big events being cancelled, etc. And we need to kind of, you know, pull together as a country, work hard, you know, support each other. And I hope twisted you know, sick methods out of the system are getting you to do your private fucking. We heard yesterday in the budget, didn't we? Uh, funding announcements that must stuff be about yourself. That you welcome. Do you think it's enough? Um, I think the funding will help because, you know, obviously it's going to put an increase. Yeah, the sheep uh, will bow down and I give it away for free. Of of staffing. You know, you can't just train doctors and nurses um, overnight. It takes time. And I think this is a real message that we have to adequately support our um, NHS and also support our training as well. Make sure we've got enough doctors and nurses for situations like this. Will doctors, do you think, like you, up and down the country, have very challenging decisions to make in the next few weeks and, and what might they be? As um, departments become more you know, busy with patients coming in and the increased pressure from the coronavirus, it, you know, uh, I think a lot of people predict that the waiting times might get longer um, and I think we have to... Put me tell you on this 7 o'clock and this is all of it. You know, at ground level but also at a senior level. About coronavirus, how we, um, coronavirus, you know, coronavirus. How we support the, the departments. Um, you when know, you again, begin, you know, sound a lot like so work hard on the front line. fucking um, Brexit, again, isn't it? You know, do my very best. Um, I think you know we've got very well, good health. I've never heard a word of, of that though since Brexit's fucking you know, buried under the rug, isn't it? Anyway, we'll get over this. Coronavirus is a, a, a next start topic. topic. We'll get uh, finally, Alex, for you, you said you know you're on the front line for yourself and your staff. Staff, how do you protect yourselves? We actually have a very easy go pop your life and ignore it. About protective. <laughs> gowns and clothing that we wear, protective equipment that we use.
issues uh, and hand washing as well. So I'm very confident that if, you know, when I go and see a patient in the isolation pod or whether it's in an isolation room uh, within the, um, the department that I am protected because I've followed the, you know, the crap procedures. It's very, very stringent. Um, we have actually the masks that we use. We are fit tested with those. So we actually make sure that the mask individually works for each healthcare professional. So I'm confident going in there that I'm safe. Alex, I said that was fine. Sounds a lot for all those who just stuck their cheap ones on on streets and done it. How many times a day <laughs> are you washing your hands? I'm washing my hands m many times a day on, on multiple points of contact. And that's a big um, point that I'm making as well. My la latest TikTok, I kind of tried to uh, explain how often we should be washing our hands. Um, it's really important. It's so important right now. It's the number one thing you can do um, to protect yourself is hand washing. Dr. Alex George, thank you very much. Let's speak now to the virologist, Dr. Natalie McDermott. Uh, very good morning to you. Thank you for your time this morning. Can you just go back to uh, one of the announcements yesterday from the World Health Organization, the announcement uh, uh, that the, 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 this has now been described as a pandemic. What's the significance of that in a practical sense? Yeah, a crazy pandemic. Well, Everyone running out buying fucking shit. Uh, where we were at, buying uh, shit roll and fucking hand sanitizer. That been, uh, That's the pandemic, pandemic. I've seen. Pandemic simply means that we now have onward person brainwashed person fucking idiots uh, throughout the majority of continents in the world, and and so we had reached that point in the eyes of the World Health Organization. But practically, they have been talking about preparing for a pandemic situation for several weeks, and it's important that countries were preparing for it in advance of it being declared or at least defined as a pandemic. Um, and I think that certainly from the statement that the World Health Organization made yesterday, there was some suggestion that they're concerned that some countries haven't been taking that seriously enough. What have we learned? That's because some countries don't habits. swallow your bullshit. So we know that the virus is spread through droplets. Um, so when people cough and sneeze, droplets come out. And if people are in close proximity to them and breathe them in, then they can become infected in that way. But people can also become infected when people... Uh, who are unwell, that's why they invented the nasal flu off. And then another person who's not unwell touches those Spread the fucking flu every winter. Touches their eyes, nose, or mouth, or eats. When kids are getting it stuck up their noses. Help us with how this plays out in practice. Um, from a scientific point of view, people will be mindful. Everyone gets flu panics and then runs get a jab. The bus. They are necessarily in a crowd. Method in madness, isn't there? Someone sneezes or someone coughs. Talk us through the science behind, you know, how close you have to be? So the uh, Public Health England would say that uh, close contact is how this virus is largely spread, although I think we're also waiting on some further scientific data to look at other mechanisms. But close contact would be defined as being within two metres of someone for a period of 15 minutes or more. Now, obviously, if you're in very close contact with someone... Stay on around people for 14 train, minutes, she's just said. Your face, as long as it's 14 minutes, you're all right. We all have a role to play right so now. So make sure you, make you sure leave we are protecting from being around certain people in 14 and minutes. And that means that we are washing our hands regularly, whether we're ill or whether we're not. But also that if we are unwell... Who the fuck can determine that 15 minutes or more? Are these fucking people for real? Home, so I'm not going to go into the Someone stood there with a the fucking stopwatch. Any viral infection, not just and the then tested him after. Any type of respiratory viral infection. And I'm not going to travel and people will swallow the shit. on a crowded train where I could also spread it. We are expecting a COBRA meeting a little later on today. And it's expected that we, the UK will move into the next phase, which is the delay phase. Which uh, could the next phase, bring in the a new world of order. measures. In amongst those things would be... Uh, pushing the agenda uh, gatherings of people over a certain size possibly the closure of schools and colleges some are bigger coming out work. at the back end of this coronavirus outbreak well, I think they don't do it for nothing that are brought into play will not necessarily be some other bigger plans on the agenda the they will be based on a risk assessment of certain regions of the uk if we're seeing a sudden increase in cases in a specific area and so um a policy that implements a, risk, a strict risk assessment uh, shows that there is good evidence or that there is at least a good possibility of there being success. We know that 
Children are particularly badly affected at the moment, it seems, by this virus, but that doesn't mean they can't be infected and spread it amongst themselves or to others. So the closure of schools or colleges will try and reduce the transmission of the virus amongst the population. Scare the kids, Dr. that's Lattie, it. Scare the kids. Uh, Close the schools. Expert, uh, virologist. Thank Attack you the young, young mind first, that's how it works. Yeah, we're making enough to answer as many questions as we can from you this morning.